Hey guys, this is Charles Jager with Shutterstock. In this tutorial, I wanna share with you some tips to reduce visible compression on your video uploads. So regardless of whatever video platform you plan to upload to, whether that be YouTube, Vimeo, Instagram, or Facebook, they're all going to transcode your uploaded video and compress it, and this is unavoidable. I often see a lot of comments on videos where people are asking others, how did you get your videos to look so crisp? And they also ask them a lot of times what their export settings are before they upload. Since the actual subject of every video is gonna be different, there's no perfect science to this, but there are some steps you can take to reduce visible compression on your videos. And notice I said visible compression because the actual compression is still going to be there, it's just not gonna be as noticeable. Some of these tips revolve around how to shoot a video, others on how to process it in post, and finally how to export the video to be uploaded. And obviously you won't be able to utilize all these tips on every project, but just keeping them in mind when you're working should help you improve your results. All right, so let's start out with shooting tips that'll help you reduce visible compression. And the first one of these is gonna be shooting in slow motion. Or if your camera doesn't have a dedicated slow motion mode, you can try shooting maybe in a 60 frames per second mode and then slow that down in post. And you might be wondering, why does slow motion reduce visible compression? And without getting too technical, the simple answer is there's just less of a drastic change from one frame to the next. Because of the slower movement, the compressed codec can recycle more pixels from one frame to the next, resulting in better preserved detail overall. As you probably already know, fast motion and compressed codecs don't mix well, and they can quickly become a blocky mess. The next shooting tip would be to shoot with a shallow depth of field. Not only will shallow depth of field help isolate your subject, but it'll also be more forgiving once it's uploaded and compressed. This is because the background detail, similar to slow motion video, won't be changing as drastically from one frame to the next. So the compressed codec can focus more data bits on the in-focus portion of the video, which in turn will preserve more detail. On shots with a deep depth of field, the compressed codec is gonna try and preserve all of the fine details in the scene, and odds are this will just end up degrading the quality of the entire image. And even though the out of focus areas will be heavily compressed, there's no fine detail there anyway, so the compression won't be as visible. Moving on to post-production, avoid uploading flat footage. I mentioned this in post-production because it's actually perfectly fine to film your footage in a really flat profile. You just wanna make sure you grade your footage to add in some contrast and saturation before you upload it. When you upload your video, that compressed codec is gonna be looking for details in the scene to preserve, and contrast and saturation are greatly gonna help the codec preserve different elements of your scene. This is also the reason a lot of nighttime footage doesn't look good online, because obviously at night there's not gonna be much contrast or saturation, so everything kinda of gets a muddy appearance once it's uploaded. Whereas daytime footage naturally has more contrast and saturation, but again, if your video is uploaded with an overly flat color grade, you can still get muddy artifacts on daytime scenes. So if you're uploading to a really compressed platform like Instagram, for example, you might wanna export a second version of your video with a little more contrast and saturation and see if it looks a little bit better once it's uploaded. The next post-production tip is gonna be preventing color banding. This is gonna be more common on motion graphics, usually with gradient backgrounds, but it can also occur on video footage, usually with a blue sky or walls that might be a single color. The easiest way to break this up is by adding in a bit of noise on those scenes. You can use the noise effect in After Effects or Premiere Pro, set it around two to 8% and check on use color noise. Alternatively, you can use something like film grain overlays as well, because those are also gonna help break up that color banding. Moving on to the exporting tips, Make sure you upload a high bitrate video. If image quality is your number one priority, it's gonna start with uploading a high bitrate video, usually with a codec like ProRes, DNX HD, or Photo JPEG. And yes, the video file is gonna be quite large and probably take a while to upload, but if you think about it, if you compress your video before you upload it to get transcoded, you're just gonna subject yourself to even more detail loss. And obviously the type of video you're gonna be uploading is gonna make a difference. If it's just something quick and informal, then obviously I wouldn't worry about it, but if it's your yearly demo reel, it's probably worth the extra hours of uploading time for the quality trade-off you're gonna get. You can also still upload a video with an H.264 codec, but if you go that route, just increase the encoding bitrate. The minimum bitrate I would recommend would be 20 megabits per second, but I typically recommend 50 megabits per second or higher for H.264 encoded videos. Finally, make sure you export and upload your video in 4K. Try this even if your video actually isn't 4K, and let me explain this a little bit. More and more video platforms compress 4K videos differently than other videos. This is because 4K videos are expected by viewers to be better quality. So when a 4K video gets uploaded to YouTube, for example, YouTube will compress that video with a different codec than most other videos. 
Most users' videos on YouTube get transcoded into a codec called MPEG-4 AVC. However, 4K videos will get transcoded into a newer codec called VP9, which can yield better looking results even when the video is only played back at the HD settings. So by uploading in 4K, you're prompting YouTube to use the VP9 codec instead of AVC. You can check the codec of your uploaded video by right clicking on it and selecting stats for nerds. One thing to note is that it may take a few extra hours before your video shows the VP9 codec after you upload it. This is because YouTube will be transcoding it longer behind the scenes so it may show up as AVC for the first few hours. All right guys, hopefully you can use some of these tips to reduce visible compression on your videos. If you guys know of any tips, let me know in the comments. And make sure you check out the Shutterstock blog for more video production tutorials just like this one. All right guys, it's been Charles Jager with Shutterstock. I'll catch you guys on the next one.